think, getting close to the last update on this radio. What started me down this is a long time ago, so I'm like, oh, you need to get a ICOM 7300, because I had the 817ND, and they said, oh, it's just a crap receiver, and it's not going to be able to get you through all the urban noise, and yada, 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 because the dynamic range. And I started thinking about that back then. It's like, but... I don't think the dynamic range is going to matter a whole lot when the noise floor on the radio is still much less than the noise outside by the city. It doesn't. <laughs> Between the Yesu and the, you know, a $6,000 to a $3,000 radio, $6,000 radio, it doesn't really matter. If you've got so much noise out there, it's, it's insignificant. You're, what's below the noise of your urban area is going to be below the noise of your urban area and you're not going to be able to hear it with your ears. So what do you get when you get a nicer radio? For example, I've got the FT891 and I've been using that one for a couple years now. It's actually got some pretty acceptable filter adjustments built in. You can go any width. You can adjust the width just fine for CW, for single sideman, it has a, a, a very feasible notch filter. It has a contour filter. And it actually does okay, but it is kind of cumbersome to move around that little menu. The noise blanker on it is total garbage. It's not going to get anything out. And it literally just turns the audio off and on. And it sounds like it actually turns the audio off and on for everything you're hearing. And so as you turn the noise blanker up, it gets rid of the noise, but you actually hear choppiness, like audio actually cutting out instead of hearing spikes and noise. I read some forums, and I don't know if the guy was just trolling on Flex, Flex's forum or not, um, how he had a 7300 and how the noise blanker did a much better job. No, it doesn't. <laughs> it's definitely a better noise blanker than the FT891, but you have several settings you have to figure out that you can tweak. The Flex, you just slide to increase. The flex is a lot easier to turn the noise blanker on and actually be, have it be effective quickly, and it seems to work in a lot more areas. What I'm discovering is I have the F MFJ 1026 noise canceller, and it's an absolute must if you have an FT891, and it would be a must from what I've experienced so far, even with the 7300. You could get by without having it, on the flex. The noise blanker is that much better and I'm not talking the wide noise blanker, I'm just talking the noise blanker. The noise blanker on the flex is much better than the other two. It makes it acceptable. Almost. You still would want a 1026. If you get the flex and the 1026 it really clears things up. Again, when I say really clears things up, you're still in an urban environment and it still sounds like garbage, but it's a lot better. So dynamic range, that doesn't even matter. Not if you've got a lot of noise. It might matter if you have clear bands and you have competing signals, but if you've got just a lot of noise and your noise floor is you know, S7, it's not gonna matter. There is something to consider too. I don't find a contour filter on the 7300. The contour filter is pretty nice. I have found there's a lot of times that has made the FT891 pull things to where I can actually hear what the person's saying a lot better. I usually will cut it down to like 2200 wide and then I'll use the contour filter and depending on who's talking I'll actually slide the contour filter back and forth to help clear their voice up and bring it out. So the contour filter is pretty good. The As far as I can tell the 7300 does not have it that's a Yesu thing. The flex does not have it. However, you can use the tracking notch filter on the flex and you can set the width and you can set the depth and you can slide that back and forth and it works very similar to the contour filter. I don't think it's quite as good because it's still going to come down more in a notch even if you do it shallow whereas the contour is more like this. But it's pretty close. The wide noise blanker on the flex doesn't seem to help me. However, since I got all my grounding taken care of, I do have less noise. I still have an F7, but I don't have that occurrences of those really hard 
jagged noises. I, I can't think of what you call them, but take care of making sure you have a good RF ground. Let's go ahead and try to do some comparisons. I'm first going to actually skip to the 7300 because I have to return this to the fellow I borrowed it from today. So let's go ahead and get started. First I want to say this radio is literally what everybody says it is. This is actually <laughs> It's, it's it's a pretty sweet radio. I would highly recommend this radio. You would definitely still want this with the MFJ noise canceller, which by the way, I'm not going to use the noise canceller during any of these tests. I've got other videos about the noise canceller. I'm just gonna compare radios based on their own merits using the same antenna and this switch up here. All right, so here we are on 14 meters. Uh, I've got a frequency tuned in. The noise blinker is actually on. This is without it. And as you can see on this kind of noise, it doesn't do anything. You have to do with these, deal with these little settings. And I've already gone through all these and it, it can't do anything about them. However, let's go ahead and go to the flex. Turn the noise blinker on. Instantly, it's gone. Now let's wait for the guy to start talking. You have just one setting, which makes it easy. But there you go. So as you can see, that noise blinker does a much better job than this noise blinker. It's still really, really hard to hear them. But I do think that guy was trolling or something because there's no way the 7300 noise blanker is better than the Flexus. Let's move on to some of the other things you get when you go from one radio to the next. You know, some of the things you get like compared to this and a much more expensive radio like the Flex is here's your pan adapter. You can, you can zoom in and see stuff. It's not really beautiful. Still does the job. Here's the flex. You can easily zoom in, zoom out by dragging. You can swipe to scroll and then setting your filter. It seems that the ICOM has some pretty good settings on that. So when you go into your filter settings, you have two wheels. What you're gonna hear in the orange is what you're gonna hear. So I just basically turn that filter down to like that. So it has your, and then if you just push the button, it resets. And then you have three different widths you can, you can have as defaults. Over here, you have eight defaults as opposed to three. And then for sizing your filter, you take your knobs and you just go like so. And there's your filter. I mean, that is slick. That is really, really slick. Do not have a contour filter on the 7300, but you can do a notch filter and what you do is you make that notch filter a little wider and then you can move it. You can drag it if you're on your computer or if you're on here and you make it a little wider then you can grab it with your finger. So here we've got a little bit of, I'm using this as a contour. I've got the width is 2100 and this is also at 2100 for the width of the filter. And uh, other than me adding the contour and the noise blanker, you'll be able to hear the difference between the two radios. I do have the noise blanker on, on the 7300. Now, don't worry about his voice. You can adjust that with an EQ. I'm referring to the noise in the background. Listen to the noise in the background. Now switch over to here. And like I say, you can you can change that. Don't worry about comparing speakers. This is comparing speakers. They're going to sound different. You can tweak them. My point was, you can get rid of the noise with the noise biker on the Flex. You cannot with the 7300. The interface on the Flex, although I have to say the Maestro's got some bugs. If you're using your computer, you won't even see those bugs, I don't think. I do think they'll eventually have them worked out. They are not hardware issues, they are bugs. Long story short, if you got a lot of noise and you're on a budget, 
and you want a radio that has a pan adapter stuff, I would go with the 7300 and get the MFJ noise canceller. If you have the money and you, I definitely, this interface on the Flex is, it runs circles around it. If you have the money, the Flex is better, obviously. The noise blanker is better on the Flex than the 7300, regardless of what that guy posted on the Flex forums. So here's my final thoughts. The Flex, you're going to get a much nicer interface. There is no comparison between that and a radio like the Yaesu or the Icom. The interface just is very, very intuitive, I think. Um, there's not a lot of buttons. I'm visually impaired. I can see it actually pretty well, even without my contacts in. And it's, for the most part, fairly easy. There's sometimes the touchscreen doesn't work the way I would like. I did try some of these stylus things off Amazon. They look like, work like crap. So, I don't know. Maybe if you could find a nice stylus, that would be one thing. But, for the most part, the touchscreen works. And when you consider that you don't even have those same touch features on the Icom, you're still a step up. What do you get when you get a nice radio? Basically, with a lot of the QRM noise, like I say, transformers, plasma TVs, all that kind of stuff, you're going to want a noise canceller like the MFJ, regardless if you have the Flex, the 817, the FT-891, the ICOM 7300, the 7600. The MFJ 1026 noise canceller really, really makes a huge difference. You will also need a receive antenna for that as well, so that's something to be aware of. Uh, so you're going to be talking probably about, you know, three, four hundred bucks with a, uh, you know, for that whole setup, depending on how you go with it. And for radios, the pan adapter is much. The the obviously the 7300 is much nicer than like the 891 but I don't think I'd want a 7300 in my car and really the 891 was designed for mobile it's it's much smaller it has the head that can come off 7300 is a bit big but for home use and price wise the 7300 actually is a really good radio if you've got a lot of QRM you could go with that you could go with the MFJ noise canceller and then focus on your antenna solution and that's probably going to be the best you're going to get you're not going to it's, it's anything else is going to be futile. The flex does help. Obviously, like you saw me get rid of the noise with the noise blanker that I can't get rid of with the 7300. But as I mentioned previously, the MFJ noise canceller takes out most of that. Anyway, once I've canceled out with the MFJ noise canceller, I, the flex has very little work to do with this noise blanker. Um, if I turn that on, it can clear it up a little more, but the noise canceller from the MFJ has already done the job. The only advantage is that sometimes I'm lazy now, and if I don't want to use the MFJ, I just hit the noise blanker and not have to tune it continually. The advantage with the Flex now is, of course, I can just put the noise blanker on, and for the most part, everything clears up. And then if I need to get it better, I can then phase with my MFJ noise canceller. Whereas before, I was always having to adjust the phase anywhere I went up and down the band just to see what I could hear. So that's that's nice, but you can do it with that noise canceller and any radio. You're going to pretty much get the same results. The contour is nice. It doesn't appear that the ICOM has that. So that that actually is a feature that I, maybe it has it. It does have a notch filter, but that notch filter is a hard notch. It just cuts it out. Um, it's not a contour, and so. That could be a downside for the ICOM, but I think for the most part you'd be happy. If, if, if it's a radio that has the features you want, if it has the display you want, if it has the controls you want, if, you, if it does what you want it to do, the only features you're only really gain is, is how well are the filters working for you and how good is the noise blanker. And like I said, add the MFJ noise canceller that takes care of anybody's noise blanker. The noise canceller from MFJ is pretty much going to clear up everything for you by comparison. At least that's what I have found. And that is my review of my adventure of buying this radio. The interface just rocks. I love it. I don't even have to think about it. It just came naturally. Again, you're not 
overstimulated with a bunch of buttons, but it's got just the right amount. You don't have to hunt and find uh, with a little screen and you click on stuff and nothing works. Everywhere you expect things to work, it just works as far as how it works, like I say, like excluding the bugs. From a customer standpoint, support standpoint, I think Flex rocks. And I think, I, yes, I'm keeping the radio. Would I recommend the radio? <laughs> If you got five grand, <laughs> yes, I would recommend the radio, but uh, no, I wouldn't. You don't need it. <laughs> I would recommend to the every person, and they don't need to be drooling over the $5,000 radio. Again, something like the 7300, or if you want something as fancy as the 76, but you can get the 7300 and maybe then go with that new two meter, 70 centimeter, and uh, what, two gigahertz or 1.2 gigahertz uh, VHF, UHF rig they have and put them on top, that would be a sweet combination. And there you're gonna have maybe about three grand total and you've got every band. That with the noise canceling and some really good antennas, honestly you'll be able to hear pretty much anything that I'll ever be able to hear with this Lex. Focus on your antennas, focus on what you can hear, and as long as you have minuscule filtering, like even the FT891, you're gonna be fine.